This fire won't go out, though just a flicker it may be Shifting through the shadows to a vision we can't see Hold fast to one another We will stand stranger to brother This fire won't go out, though just a flicker it may be Shifting through the shadows to a vision we can't see Hold fast to one another, we will stand stranger to brother Orville and Wilbur Wright were American aviation pioneers generally credited with inventing, building, and flying the world's first successful motor-operated airplane. They made the first controlled, sustained flight of a powered, heavier-than-air aircraft with the Wright Flyer on December 17, 1903, four miles south of Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. The Wright brothers were also the first to invent aircraft controls that made fixed wing powered flight possible. In 1904 and 1905, the Wright brothers developed their flying machine to make longer running and more aerodynamic flights with the Wright Flyer II, followed by the first truly practical fixed wing aircraft, the Wright Flyer III. The brothers' breakthrough was the creation of a three axis controlled system which enabled the pilot to steer the aircraft effectively and to maintain its equilibrium. This method remains standard on fixed wing aircrafts of all kind. From the beginning of their aeronautical work, Wilbur and Orville focused on developing a reliable method of pilot control as the key to solving the flying problem. This approach differed significantly from other experimenters of the time who put more emphasis on developing powerful engines. Using a small home-built wind tunnel, the Wrights also collected more accurate data than any before, enabling them to design more efficient wings and propellers. Their first U.S. patent did not claim invention of a flying machine, but rather a system of an aerodynamic control that manipulated a flying machine's surfaces. The brothers gained the mechanical skills essential to their success by working for years in their Dayton, Ohio-based shop with printing presses, bicycles, motors, and other machinery. Their work with bicycles in particular influenced their belief that an unstable vehicle, such as a flying machine, could be controlled and balanced with practice. This was a trend, as many other aviation pioneers were also dedicated cyclists and involved in the bicycle business in various ways. From 1900 until their first powered flights in late 1903, the brothers conducted extensive glider tests that also developed their skills as pilots. Their shop mechanic, Charles Taylor, became an important part of the team, building their first airplane engine in close collaboration with the brothers. Wilbur and Orville Wright were two of seven children born to Milton and Susan Wright. Milton Wright was born in 1828 and died in 1917. Milton was a clergyman of English and Dutch ancestry. Susan Catherine Corner Wright was born in 1831 and died in 1889. Susan was of German and Swiss ancestry. 
Wilbur was born near Millville, Indiana in 1867, and Orville was born in Dayton, Ohio in 1871. The brothers never married. The other Wright siblings were Ruchlin, Lauren, Catherine, and twins Otis and Ida, which died in infancy. None of the Wright children had middle names. Instead, their father tried hard to give them distinctive first names. Wilbur was named for Wilbur Fisk and Orville for Orville Dewey, both clergymen that Milton Wright admired. They were Will and Orv to their friends, and in Dayton, their neighbors knew them simply as the bishop's kids or the bishop's boys. Because of their father's position as a bishop in the Church of the United Brethren in Christ, he traveled often and the Wrights frequently moved. The Wright family moved 12 times before finally returning permanently to Dayton in 1884. In elementary school, Orville was given to mischief and was once expelled. In 1878, when the family lived in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, their father brought home a toy helicopter for his two younger sons. The device was based on an invention of French aeronautical pioneer Alphonse Panad. Made of paper, bamboo, and cork with a rubber band to twirl its rotor, it was about a foot long. Wilbur and Orville played with it until it broke and then built their own. In later years, they pointed to their experience with the toy as the spark of their interest in flying. It was decided by the family that a new and far grander house would be built using the money that the Wrights had earned through their inventions and business. Called affectionately Hawthorne Hill, building had begun in the Dayton suburb of Oakwood, Ohio, while Wilbur was in Europe. Catherine and Orville oversaw the project in his absence. Wilbur's one known expression upon the design of the house was that he have a room and a bathroom of his own. The brothers hired Skank and Williams, an architectural firm, to design the house. Along with input from both Wilbur and Orville, Wilbur did not live to see its completion in 1914. He became ill on a business trip to Boston in April 1912. The illness is sometimes attributed to eating bad shellfish at a banquet. After returning to Dayton in early May 1912, worn down in mind and body, he fell ill again and was diagnosed with typhoid fever. He lingered on, his symptoms relapsing and remitting for many days. Wilbur died at age 45 at the Wright family home on May 30th. After 42 years living at their residence on 7 Hawthorne Street, Orville, Catherine, and their father Milton moved to Hawthorne Hill in spring 1914. Milton died in his sleep on April 3, 1917, at age 88. Up until his death, Milton had been very active, preoccupied with reading, writing articles for religious publications, and enjoying his morning walks. He had also marched in a Dayton woman's suffrage parade along with Orville and Catherine. Orville died at age 76 on January 30, 1948, over 35 years after his brother, following his second heart attack, having lived from the horse and buggy age to the dawn of supersonic flight. Both brothers are buried in the family plot at Woodland Cemetery, Dayton, Ohio. John T. Daniels, the Coast Guardsman who took their famous first flight photo, died the day after Orville. fire won't go out, though just a flicker it may be. 
Shifting through the shadows to a vision we can't see Hold fast to one another We will stand straight